All right, so I'm here in my garage and outside is the T-Motor U15. I also have a 16S Lite battery connected it in the Vest 150. And uh, this is behind the window, so I have uh, another small vest here and a canvas cable that goes outside through the door, so hopefully it's quite safe to stand in here. Uh, so I did some tuning already. And as you can see, we are using the new MX Lambing Observer with the Lambda compensation. And let's go to the real-time data and to the FOC data. And I will give, just give it full throttle now, see what happens. And you can see it runs fine up to... 6 kilowatts or so. It goes down a bit when we're at full speed, but on acceleration it goes a bit above that. We cannot reach more speed at the moment because we are limited by the input voltage. Uh, actually, let's try some field weakening live now. So we have, at the moment we don't have any field weakening incurred, so let's do say 50 amps field weakening as well. See if we can do more than 5.7 kilowatts when it's uh, at full speed. Okay, almost 7 kilowatts, so that was really effective. And we can see the current is a bit unstable in the mid-current range here. And I noticed, I think that is because we get a lot of voltage drop on the capacitors on the, bu uh, on the bus on this one, because this, those have much higher uh, ESR than the ones on the 75300, for instance. But uh, essentially, the only thing I changed to fix that was to make the current control the time constant a bit faster. It's actually not set here, but I think I just doubled the KP and KI values manually. So let's read the default configuration and do a setup from the start. So we'll just run the detection as usual. And the thing that I had to change, and that was essentially the only thing that caused me problems, problems this time. Uh, except the time constant here was the inductance, because I think we pushed it into saturation a bit. So I had to go down from detected 16 microhandrous to 12 microhandrous or so. Then it seemed quite stable at that inductance. So now we did the detection with the, all the default values. And the only thing I did was decrease the inductance from 16 to 12 microhenry and set the time constant here to 500 microseconds. Uh, let's see if it runs. Uh, the app should st still be configured, so I can still use the remote control that I have here. And that runs fine. But the reason is that we also have the default current, so we only go up to 60 amps now. So let's go to the current limits and give it a bit more. I had 180 amps before, so let's go straight for 180 amps. Okay, that sounds a bit different. And I see what the problem is now. You see that the propeller is spinning backwards. Hopefully that doesn't cause any damage. So we'll go to the general settings and invert the motor direction. Try the same thing again. And it runs perfectly fine. Let's do the field weakening again and see if we can push the power a bit more. Uh, field weakening and I think I had 50 amps before. Let's see what we get with 50 amps field weakening. Yeah, I think the canvas is glitching a bit, so I will not sample data and then write the setting to it. And then sample the data again. And just give it full throttle, see what happens. Six point eight kilowatts. We can also see the ERPM, so now with field weakening we are a bit over seven thousand here. Let's try to look here and see what we actually get. 73,000. And now we go back and set the field weakening to zero. See if the right works this time. It did. 
and then we are at 70,000 so we got another 3,000 ERPM on top and uh, also keep in mind that this is a propeller so the load increases with something like the square or even the cube I think the square of the RPM so 3,000 extra RPM at that range that is a lot of extra speed and also for reference if you go back here and I decrease the time constant again to 1000 microseconds or increase it uh, calculate apply old and then I also have to no I think the inductance is still the same have to stop the sampling while I write now over this long canvas cable yeah so this is the canvas is a non-twisted like 15 or 20 meter long just the uh, uh, electrical installation cable so it's not the best so now we have the one millisecond time constant and now we go back to real-time data and look at the FOC current and now when I increase it slowly you can see that it gets a bit stable here I think if we get back get past this region then it will work so let's try that full throttle yeah, you have this one unstable region and I think that is because the bus voltage is dropping a lot because we have so high ESR in the bus capacitors under 150. But uh, yeah, we can work around that a bit with a lower time constant. Maybe in 400 microseconds is even better. Let's try that. Right. And now we'll increase the throttle slowly again. And uh, the region, I think it was around 100 amps before. That's where it was unstable. It should not be unstable now, hopefully. Yeah, you see we get some noise, but it doesn't go out of control at least. And full throttle. So that is the T-Motor U15 with the MX Lemming Observer, together with the um, uh, Flux Linkage Tracker or Observer. Works really well. And to recap here, to get this particular motor running, and I would assume also similar motors, we go for the default settings. And I gave it a bit less time constant. And I also went down in inductance a bit. I went from 16 to 12 micro on this one. So if we go by something similar on other motors, it should be quite okay, I think.